Hi, my name is Holger Hornis. I'm the product manager for Intelligent Systems at Peppel & Fuchs. This is part two of a video series showing you how to use a new safety controller technology from Peppel & Fuchs. In part one, we discussed installation and some basic electrical connections. In this video, we will be covering the Simon Plus configuration software. You can also check out our website and find additional safety configuration examples ready for download. Before we go into the Simon Plus safety configuration software, we need to make one additional electrical connection. For this demonstration, we will be using a contactor that is going to be activated by the safe output on the safety controller. Now we will configure a safety system using the Simon Plus configuration software. For that, we first have to start the program. I have a desktop icon here. In your case, the icon may be in the start menu or somewhere else, wherever you decided to install it. So double click on the icon to start up Simon Plus. If you have enabled the start assistant, then the start assistant window will show up first. Uh, make sure you select new configuration and then click on OK to accept. Note the green bar at the bottom of the screen. This indicates that Simon Plus has established communication to a safety controller utilizing the USB interface. The next window that pops up is the information about monitor and bus screen. Here we need to type a configuration title and since our first example is a simple e-stop circuit, I will call it simple e-stop circuit. Also on this screen, in the function range part, we select the hardware. You can see this is the visual for the controller. Make sure it's checked off here. Next, go over to Safety Basic Monitor, the tab up here on the right. Click it. And on the window that comes up now, we need to specify the configuration for the inputs. We will be using three dry contact e-stops, and those will be connected to input sets, sets S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5, S6. So therefore, the radio buttons over on this side are all selected. The input set, set S7, S8, we will not be using. Instead, we want to utilize those inputs as conventional inputs for the purpose of resetting the safety system once an e-stop has been pushed. So I check the radio box over here to indicate that those contacts are conventional inputs. Also, before we keep going on, uncheck this checkbox here and then accept everything by hitting the OK button. Having that done, uh, we see a couple of things here on the right, on the left side of the screen. These are the tools. The one, the tool part that we will use the most is the so called device library that contains the function blocks that will be dragged onto the part here in the middle, the configuration space. By dragging and dropping function blocks, the safety circuit will be defined. We will start out by specifying the type of output. So we can scroll down until we come to the safe output section. And for this example, I want to use a so-called category zero stop, which is an immediate stop. I grab it and drag it over onto the configuration space where I drop it off. The details window will show up and it gives me the opportunity to name my my function block. So here I call it perhaps motor one um, simply because the, the safety contactor that will be controlled by the safe output may ultimately control motor one on my machine. Also here I selected OSSD one. This means that it is the first of the two safe outputs that will be used. All the other functions are unused uh, 
for our purpose and we simply click OK to accept the settings. Next, we need to add our safe inputs. As I said earlier, this is an example for three e-stops. So we go up into the monitoring devices section and we will grab one of the e-stop symbols and drop it right here onto the global end function. Once we drop it, the details window shows up and we can make a couple of changes. So the first change is to name this something more useful. I want to call this eStop1. The second change is we need to change the type to a dependent with filtering. This allows for a certain amount of contact bounds and contact asynchronicity as specified by the numbers in this area. Don't change those. Those are pretty good for typical e-stops. Also here is where we select the input that will be utilized for this particular piece of hardware. This e-stop is connected to contact set S1, S2. So that's exactly what we want and uh, we can click OK. We now repeat this for the other e-stops. Again, selecting the, the, the visual in the device monitoring section, dropping it onto the end, renaming the function block. If I make a mistake, that's not a big deal. We can always highlight it, delete the wrong entries. Select as the type the dependent with filtering. And uh, because we've already used S1, S2 up for the first e-stop, then the program will logically assume that the next available input set will be utilized. You can change that by clicking here and you, you could assign the third available input set, but we're going to stick with S3, S4. Click OK. That adds another e-stop to the configuration. We now go and grab the third e-stop we want to utilize. This is e-stop 3. We will further select it as dependent with filtering. And uh, now there are no more choices available. There's only one contact set unused and it's automatically selected. So now we have our e-stops connected to our motor. The last thing we need to provide is a means of restarting. And um, as I said earlier, e-stops require some sort of a reset function once they're released. And we do that by picking the so-called monitored start with a monitor input. We take that function block, drop it here, we can rename it whatever we want. I'll leave the name as it is. And now, since we converted a contact set to conventional I.O., we get the choice to have our reset function either through contact S72 or S81. I showed earlier in the video how this little e-stop, how the little reset button was connected. So I'm going to stick with S72 because that's where, where my reset button is connected. I OK the screen and the configuration should look something like this. Up on the toolbar is a green check mark, the configuration checker. We can click that, a window will pop up, the configuration is correct and it'll go away after um, a short amount of time. So now we're ready to download this configuration to the monitor. Because we have communication as indicated by the green status bar, at the bottom of the screen, we can go directly to monitor and select the PC to monitor option. That means that the configuration will be taken from the PC, our program, Simon Plus, and downloaded to the monitor. Most operations, or actually all operations, are password protected. So once I punch in my password, I click OK, and that will start the download. First, the configuration is sent to the controller. While that takes place, 
the controller performs logical checks um, to verify that everything is, is okay. And then it constructs a configuration log file, which is a text file that is sent back to the PC. And by clicking OK, we're basically agreeing to checking this out, making sure that our configuration is all OK. We're now in the validation stage where I will electronically sign off that I will check the configuration, make everything, make sure that everything works properly. Again, by punching in my password, I agree to those conditions stated in the text box. The configuration has been validated and now I'm asked if I want to transition the safety controller into the protective operation and I click yes. Again we will get the updated configuration log which contains a timestamp and a date stamp of when the download was and who signed off on it, in this case my name and some other features that are uh, useful for later on. We're not going to look at this right now, but instead we are going to wait for the diagnostic screen to build up. So here's the diagnostic screen and uh, you can see that there are a couple of colors associated with these various function blocks. The green color of the e-stops indicates that all in e-stops have been pulled out, so they're in their release state. As a consequence, the global AND function provides a, also a green line because the AND link of uh, three true inputs is again a true output. That true output is fed to the motor, but the motor you can see is off as indicated by the red color, the red box around it. The reason that is, is we're still waiting for the reset function and if I click my reset button, you heard the motor contractor pull in and the safety system goes into the release state. Now I hit my e-stop and as you can see I selected e-stop number one. As a consequence of e-stop number one going to the red false state, the global AND is false and therefore the motor had to drop out. If I release that e-stop, we're back to where we were before. All e-stops released, but we still need to get a reset. And by virtue of the reset function, the motor starts up. So that's all for this little configuration example. Now let's check out the operation by watching the hardware. Depressing the e-stop will deactivate the contactor and therefore turning off the LED. Releasing the e-stop still requires the reset operation before the contractor will activate. Please watch our video 3 for a configuration example involving magnetic door interlock switches.